Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Raw Law Unfiltered with your host of the DUI Guy Plus. That's me. Okay, this is, I'm, I'm going to take my headset off for a second because we're only going to need it for one bit of this whole interaction, okay? you. What I'm about to say, you guys, you, you are not ready for because I wasn't ready for it. When somebody messaged me, one of my followers on X was like, hey, uh, have you heard Elaine Bredehoft is talking shit again? And I'm like, wait, what? About what? What is going on? What is happening? Why are we bringing this up? Why is this being unearthed? It's 2024. It's like February 18th. Spring is around the corner. Why are we back on this topic? It's over. Amber lost. She lost the appeal. She's on the verge of losing this appeal on the insurance cases that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Why is this coming back? Why are we unearthing this zombie, this skeleton, this dead case, this case that Amber has lost, this case that Johnny has won? It has been clear who the abuser is. That is Amber. It is clear who the victim is. That is Johnny. Why all of a sudden are we unearthing this zombie? And here it is, okay? Th this, is, this is just mind-boggling. I am literally... I'm trying to figure out what is going on, and this is what's happening, okay? Um, Elaine Bredehoft apparently went on Vice and decided to do an interview. This is what we know. Now, before I get into it, before I get into it, because, oh, boy, I have a lot to say. I want to show you guys. Let's watch it together. Let's watch it together. This is her um piece right so this is the preview so the actual interview is going to air on wednesday i think somebody told me this is it okay this is elaine bredehoft this is what she says about johnny's victory and amber's loss you ready you're not ready for this and we're gonna we're going to watch it together. Here's what I'm going to do. It's it's a 37-second clip, so it's very short. We're going to watch the 37 seconds with no commentary so that you guys can get the full picture, and then we're going to go back and analyze, okay? I, I know you guys are going to want to, like, throw your phone out the window, throw it at the – don't do it. You're going to want to punch your TV. Don't do it. We're going to break it down, I promise, okay? You ready? Here we go. He developed this fan base – that just adores him unconditionally. They will blame whoever he might have done something wrong to. It's their fault they asked for it. Well, Amber, what did you do to cause him to hit you? You must be the bad person here. And that's the way they thought. About 95% of the social media wasn't just anti-Amber. It was with a purpose to annihilate Amber. There's no way she could have survived this. There's no way anyone could have survived this. Okay, so that's the video, okay? Right out of the gate, I will tell you this. First of all, what is with the juxtaposition of a man, like, beating the crap out of some object in the background as she's talking about who the victim is and who the... Oh, my God, there is so much to unpack here. But before we get into unpacking the video, I just want to say to you all, um, this is, this is, I didn't, I did not see this coming. Honestly, I thought it was over. I thought all the interviews were done. You know, Ben Chu did his interviews. Camille Vasquez did her interviews. Amber did her interviews with NBC. Uh, we had court TV. We had, you know, I I Elaine did her NBC, you know, bit. And now what is going on? What on earth is happening? So this is, like I said, this is vice TV. Look at this. This is vice TV. Look at what they wrote. Look at the caption. Amber Heard's former attorney, Elaine Charlson Bredehoft. Okay, so far so good. Speaks out, okay, with new revelations. What? New revelation of what? Of who? Of why? What? After an explosive Depp v. Heard trial back in 2022. So now we have new revelations coming two and a half years or whatever, almost two years after the trial. Are you joking it's dead. It's gone. It's said for. Why are we doing this? Oh, sorry. That was, <laughs> I listened to myself for a second. Um, 
Hear more on Nine Lives with Johnny Depp airing Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern on Vice TV. And you bet your sweet butts we are going to be watching this crap and reacting to it uh, because this is this is insanity. This is complete insanity. I I never in a million years would I think that they're really going to go this low. But hey, I, I, I expect anything out of them, I guess, at this point. So let's break it down. So let's break it down. So in the interview, this is the preview, right? This is the preview of the interview that's going to air on Wednesday, two, three days from now. Uh, today's Sunday, the 18th, if you're watching this live or if you're watching it today. Um, let's break it down. So this is Elaine Bredehoft, and this is what she says, right? He developed this fan base that just adores him unconditionally. Okay. Johnny Depp, let's break out the first sentence. Johnny Depp created a fan base that adores him unconditionally. First of all, that is a lie. He has a fan base because he's been making movies for, oh, I don't know, Elaine, maybe 40 plus of the last years of his life, four decades of successful movies and movie deals like um, the, the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, Chocolat. I mean, so many movies to name. I, I can't, my brain, you know, Edward Scissorhands, um, What's that one with the, they make the pies, the the barber, the demon barber from Fleet Street, Sweeney Todd, you know, all these classic movies that are just so, people adore his character, they adore his personality, they adore him as a human, and sure, I mean, he's built a fan base, so she's not wrong there, but the second statement that adores him unconditionally, do you, do you guys remember what happened in like March, April of 2022, and, and actually, excuse me. Let me rephrase that. Between like 2018 and 2022, when Johnny could not speak about what Amber did to him, I mean, there were a lot of people who were like, man, I don't know about that Johnny guy. He may have done something and we weren't sure. And, and his lawyers were like, Johnny, just be quiet. Do not talk about it. Do not mention anything. Just, just focus on the main event. Just focus on the main event. That is the trial. At the trial, you will speak your piece. And Johnny said, okay, by the way, I'm drinking from uh, my favorite mug. You lost here. Have a mega pint. It's in our store. Go check it out. I'll link in the description below if I if I haven't already. Um, it's my favorite. Oh, everything tastes so much better out of this mug. I know it looks like piss water, but this is a yerba mate and it's delicious. The last thing I need right now is more caffeine, but I don't care. I need it for this because I am shell-shocked. So that just adores him unconditionally. So that's not true. That is not true. Uh, th that is a fan base that actually took a step back. Hollywood took a step back from him. And they were like, no, we are not sure what is going on. The day it flipped was the day she took the stand. And everybody was like, okay, Amber, I do not believe, like whatever you're putting down, I'm not buying. I don't understand what's happening here. Uh, we thought you were the victim. It's starting to seem like the other way around. This is very confusing to me. So, um, and then eventually, of course, everybody understood what the truth was. It's not Johnny the abuser, Amber the victim. It is the reverse. It is actually Amber is the one who's been abusing him. And we have, you know, we have quotes, we have tapes, we have, we have her testimony, we have six weeks of trial. So the only way I can chalk this up to, by the way, is that, uh, they're trying to rewrite the narrative to all the people who have not watched the trial because we're two years removed from the trial. There's this whole new generation of people who is like going to be just blindly supporting Amber. She's trying to build up her fan base artificially and she's trying to revive whatever's left of her. I know I made the joke. Uh, it wasn't even intended as a joke, but I said she's trying to revive her career. And people were like, what career? There was no career to be revived in the first place. But OK. All right. So just adores him unconditionally. I think we have debunked that statement already. Let's move on. They will blame whoever he might have done something wrong to. It's their fault they asked for it. So the argument there that she's making is it, the unconditional, which I think we already debunked, support of Johnny. So like, doesn't matter what, what you do. So Johnny could have been literally, the way that she's describing it, Johnny could have been like, beating the crap out of Amber, you know, on video, beating her nose into a bloody pulp. And people will be like, but I still support him because I love him. I love Johnny unconditionally. It doesn't matter what Johnny does. I support him no matter what. And I love him. And he's my, yes, he beat the snot out of her allegedly. I don't trust that video. There's a lot of AI out there. 
And I just, I'm just going to blindly, you know, like, like a freaking cult, which by the way, pot calling kettle black, anyone, anyone, Bueller, anyone, come on, man. I am just, oh, so unconditionally, it's like their fault. They asked for it. So again, trying to attribute, it's not Johnny's fault that, that he lost. It's not Amber's fault that she, I'm sorry. It's not Johnny's fault that Amber lost. It's not Amber's fault that Amber lost. It is your fault and your fault and your fault for supporting him and your fault. It's not the jury that decided after six weeks of testimony what the verdict is based on evidence that they heard and saw in court. No, 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 no. It is you, uh, that umbrella guy and Laura B and DUI guy and Rob and Ian and legal vices and, and, uh, 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 Nick Ricada and um, uh, I, I'm trying to name as many law tubers as I can think of off the top of my head. It is your fault. You made Amber lose. They're going back to that same bullshit narrative that they did in the freaking documentary. Okay. That aired back. I think it was like May of last year. That's what they're doing. They're trying to, again, eliminate reality because reality hurts reality. They cannot change reality. They cannot morph reality. They cannot the, they're trying to obliterate reality and go from fiction and fiction is you did it you john and you tammy and you esb uh 40 and you emily d baker and you sophie and piggy and mystic gaming and fred johnson and Ghost Rider and melissa smith and patty and vicky nielsen and green-eyed southern girl and diane Mar maronis and care for jc youtube and and Tamil Badger and Danny Athia and, and Scranton Strangler and Vicky Nielsen. And I think I said that twice. And Yvette Rodriguez, you guys, you guys did this. You are the reason Amber lost. I'm sorry. What fucking universe are we living in? And Brian and Jax. Exactly. Andy, Pascal, uh, Yellow Jacket, I forget, uh, Yellow Flash. Um, I think I named Umbrella Guy. It's like, oh, my, Andrea Burkhart, it was all us. We caused Amber to lose. Why? Because you got to put the fault on somebody. And it's easy to shift blame. It's easy to redirect the, the blame because when you're the one at fault, when you fucked it up, Elaine Bredehofer, she's incapable of taking responsibility it's like, oh, come on, man. All right, let's keep analyzing. All right, let's break it down. Well, Amber, what did you do to cause him to hit you? Amber, what did you do? Amber, what did you do to cause him to hit you? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Let me put my lawyer hat back on. This is, um, is this an admission? There's a very serious problem here that I don't know if Elaine realizes because she's such a terrible attorney. And she may have crossed the line. If those of you who have seen the big Lebowski when, um, you know, over the line, he screams. Uh, it's a league game, Smokey. You, you went over the line. I'm sorry. I have to mark it zero. And he pulls this piece out, right? This is this is Elaine Bredehoff going over the line, potentially. Because what did she just do? Did she just admit, first of all, what did you do, Amber, that caused him to hit you? Right? What did you do? So first of all, she has a responsibility as her attorney to protect. She has a fiduciary duty, the legal term for it. She has a fiduciary duty to her client to protect her client's interests or former clients. We also, as attorneys, even when we're no longer representing clients, we have a fiduciary duty. It basically is a fancy word for protect them. We owe a fiduciary duty to our clients and former clients. Just because you are, I'm not currently representing you, but I represented you two years ago, doesn't mean that I don't owe any fiduciary duty to you and I can go and spill your secrets to the whole world. You know what I mean? That is not, you can't do that. 
And so I'm interested to see in this interview if she at any point crossed the line, because that seems to be very close to crossing the line. What Amber, what did you do? It is literally like this, because now she is potentially throwing her own client under the bus in exchange for her own personal gain. And for that, lawyers lose their licenses. There are basically three or four layers of punishment that you can think of uh, when you get like a bar complaint or something like that. You know, the, your local bar association in your state, the one that gave you your license as a licensed practicing attorney, you can either get a, um, um, you know, we've investigated and we're not going to do anything about it. We've investigated, number two, higher on the on the list, we've investigated and we're going to give you a private reprimand. So basically like bad lawyer, don't do it again. Number three is a public reprimand. That is bad lawyer, don't do it again. And we're going to tell the world what you did. Uh, number four is, oh, I'm sorry, there's five. Number four is um, public reprimand with a suspension. So bad lawyer, we're going to tell everyone what you did, and we're taking away your license for a year, six months, two years, whatever. And number five, disbarment. Bad lawyer, we're going to tell everyone what you did, and we're taking your way your license forever. Okay? When you are an attorney and you are telling the public the private confidences of a former client that you previously represented, you're breaching attorney-client confidentiality. There's nothing more sacred in the attorney world than attorney-client confidentiality. If you breach attorney-client confidentiality for your own personal gain, you are skirting the line between suspension and disbarment. There is no middle ground. There is no ends, ifs, or buts about it. They're not going to give you a private reprimand and a public reprimand because that's not enough. They have to set an example out of you. So I'm curious to know, if, I, when we watch this interview, how close to the line is she going to... Because at this point, it's very possible that Elaine Bredehoff is like, I have nothing to lose. I'm just going to say my piece. I don't care what happens because I'm out of a job anyway. Maybe either this is going to revive my career or kill it. You can't revive a zombie, so might as well try anything that I can, you know? So if she's... And if she's retiring, wait a second... Oh, I want to know where you got this information, YT3. If she's retiring and she really is like no fucks given, throwing her client under the bus, take my license, here it is, I don't care about it anyway, that would be something for the ages. This would be unprecedented. You thought the whole unprecedented stuff, if you thought the whole clerk influencing the jury in the Murdoch murder trial, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look this up, this is crazy. The, the judge basically admitted that the clerk has lost all credibility even though she did not grant the new trial, but they're going to be appealing. It's a long story. But um, in a nutshell, it's just the the clerk basically um, in, injected herself into the jury trial and was talking to the jurors about why they should find him guilty. Uh, it's it's insane. Uh, it is defamation. It's beyond defamation. He has before you. Like I said, this is a potential disbarment. She could lose her law license if she breaches the attorney-client confidentiality and the duty that she owes to former clients. There's a rule on that. And we can actually read that rule. Um, I'll, I'll show it to you right now. Duty to former clients, American Bar Association. We'll go to the one that um, is, is mandatory for all lawyers across the board, no exceptions. Okay? Let's, let's look at that real quick. And um, ESB40, thank you again. Um, you're saying, but isn't it an issue because Amber was found liable for defamation? I feel Elaine is repeating lies, which is grounds for her to be this part. It is possible. That is exactly what we're talking about. You are right on the money. You are right on the money. Um, so yeah, so let's keep going. Okay. Uh, well, oh, sorry. So let's just switch gears for just a second. So this is it. This is the rule. Okay. This is the rule that she could potentially have violated. This is a rule 1.9, duties to former clients. This is the American Bar Association, ABA, last updated April 17th, 2019. Client-lawyer relationship, see? A lawyer who has formally represented a client in a matter shall not. You see these words? This is not a may not, could not, possibly, maybe, I don't know. Shall not. It's a must. You must not. You must not. Okay? Remember these, remember these words 
shall not thereafter represent another person in the same or substantially related matter in which the person uh, a person's interests are materially adverse to the interests of the former client unless the former client gives informed consent which is confirmed in writing so you can't represent two parties you can't represent the husband and then represent the wife in the same divorce that's the easiest way to describe it then a lawyer should not knowingly represent the person da 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 da, da. now c a lawyer who has formally represented a client in a matter or who's present or firm or firm has formally represented a client in a matter, again, shall not thereafter, here's the language that you were looking for, use information relating to the representation to the disadvantage of the former client, except as these rules are permitted with respect to a client as information become generally known, or reveal information relating to the representation, except as these rules will permit, okay? So let's say a client comes to your office and says, I'm gonna go murder my wife as soon as this meeting is over. You, the lawyer, have a duty to report that because now you're gonna be complicit in the murder and nobody wants to be complicit. So if a client tells you I'm about to go out and commit a crime, you can report that, that you can breach attorney-client confidentiality in very, very limited circumstances, right? And that's one of them. I'm about to go and commit a crime. I can go report that if a client tells me that in my office. Now, if they tell me I have previously committed a crime, I don't have a right to the same sharing of information because that's probably what they're there to, to represent you, for you to represent them on, right? So this is what potentially Elaine Bredehoft is violating right here, right now, potentially. A lawyer who has formerly represented Amber. So Elaine Bredehoft, who is, let's let's plug in the names. Elaine Bredehoft, who has formerly represented Amber Heard in the Johnny Depp trial or has formally represented Amber Heard in a Johnny Depp trial, shall not use information relating to the representation to the disadvantage of the former client or for her own gain or reveal any information relating to the representation of Amber Heard in that trial. She's not allowed to do either of those things. And I don't know, maybe she's doing some of these things in this interview. We'll find out on Wednesday, right? Uh, I wonder how much she got paid for this interview. That, that would be an interesting question. You must be the bad person here. And that's the way they thought. You must be the bad person here. And that's the way they thought. So forget evidence, forget testimony, forget what we saw, forget what we heard. Apparently we've all been brainwashed. Mambu C and Samo and Lulu's mom and Green Eyed Southern Girl and Jacqueline Weaver and DY guy and that umbrella guy and Emily D. Baker and Nick Riqueda and so on and so on and so on. We have all been completely brainwashed. We we just decided at our whim because we love Johnny and we glorify Johnny in 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 the, 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 the I don't know in what ways to where we just blindly follow him to Jonestown to go drink the Kool-Aid and meet him at the mothership. Oh my God, this woman is so out of touch with reality. Okay, let's keep going. About 95% of the social media wasn't just anti-Amber. Okay, so 95% of social media was anti-Amber. Do you know why? Because Amber is a liar and we don't like liars. That's why 95% of the social media was against her. And I think it was more than, I think it's probably closer to 99. Allow me to correct you, Elaine Bredehoft. It was 99% of the social media was against Amber. And they weren't just, they were not anti-Amber. We're anti-liars. We're anti-frauds. We're anti-false charging. We're anti-destroying a man because you want to destroy a man because you think it's going to further your career for the sake of destroying him with lies. That's what we are against. Are you kidding me? Okay, so they weren't just anti-Amber. What were they, Elaine? Please, please tell us. It was with a purpose to annihilate Amber. Because we want to annihilate liars. I don't see a problem. I don't, I fail to see a problem. There's no way. And again, what is with this juxtaposition 
of this woman who kind of has Amber's hair. You can see it's clearly a woman. Her, she has very long, sharp, claw-like nails. I mean, these are like witch nails if I've ever seen them, if, I've, if I may say so. Does anybody else notice this? These are like, you, if she scratches you, your, your face is going to come off. Um, is, uh, is this an allegory to the devil woman that Amber was? Okay. Um, so that juxtaposition of her nails and the man like beating something in the background, like it's a notebook that he's beating into the ground. I don't know. Seems very weird. But uh, obviously they're trying to send a message, right? Amber, there's no way she could have survived this. There's no way anyone could have survived this. There's no way she could have survived this. There's no way anyone could have survived this. So just tell the truth and you would have survived this. Thanks so much for the clarification. You are welcome, SB40. Thank you so much for your support, honestly. Um, this is bizarre. This is so bizarre. That's it. This is it. Um, I just... He developed this oops. fan base. Um, I don't know. I think Elaine is on very thin ice. I think she is potentially on the verge of... Uh, being in breach of attorney-client confidentiality and throwing her own client under the bus for her own personal gain. And that is not just a big no-no, that is a lose-your-license no-no. So we'll see. I guess we'll see on... Um, yeah, we're anti-domestic abuse, exactly. Like, how can you not be? Like, show of hands, who is pro-domestic abuse? Like, what the fuck? Nobody, nobody, nobody is going to raise their hand. That is the stupidest thing to even ask. But when he twists the narrative and when you say, oh, no, 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 he was anti-Amber, the person, right? It's not what she said. It's not what she did. It's not what, what happened. Like, forget the facts. Again, they're going back to what Amber tried to do during the trial. Forget the facts. Stop listening to evidence. Stop believing your eyes. Stop believing your ears. Listen to what we tell you. She's like a, a terrible rendition of, of a totalitarian government. You know, don't listen to what you see and hear. Don't believe your eyes. Just trust us. Just trust us for what we're telling you because what we are telling you is the truth and everything else just, just doesn't exist because everything else hurts our case and hurts our position. So I don't understand why this is happening now. I don't understand why on earth she decided to do it unless she's on her way out. If Elaine Bredehoff is like, you know, here's, here's my bar license. I'll I can show you guys. This is my bar license. Elaine's like, here you go. I'm done. You can have it. I don't want it. I'm not interested. Take it. I'm I'm done practicing law. Well, more power to her. She wants she wants to go out swinging. She wants to give us her bar license in exchange for some money that she got from this interview. God bless her. You can do whatever you want. Um, I think it's a terrible idea if this is exactly what she's doing. Uh, I think it is a terrible move. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that this is not what she's doing and I'm missing the mark somewhere. But what she's doing is she's doing injustice to victims everywhere. That's what she is doing. All victims and people who have suffered at the hand of domestic violence who watched the trial sided with Johnny and said, Johnny, you, I empathize with you. I see you, Johnny. I understand you. She is, you know what she's doing? She's spitting in their faces. That's what she's doing right now. And that is disgusting. That is disgusting behavior. No matter how you spin it, even if she's not doing a, a, a violation of the rules of ethics and duty of duties of, to former clients, I, I just see even ESB40. There, there you go. Thank you so much. I am an R survivor and I was completely appalled. There it is. And triggered. I, literally, I, I didn't even see your message. And I just... Um, by Amber and her lies, every person with common sense, survivor or not, should be offered, uh, excuse me, should be offended by this, shaking my head, hashtag abuse has no gender. I mean, my God. Well, um, thank you all for joining. I really needed to speak my piece on this because as soon as I saw, I I'm sure Tug is going to do a video on this as well. I just wanted to go live, share my piece with you all. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel. I love every single one of you. I will see you in the next video. I'm going to be making some more content. We have a lot of stuff 
We have new shorts coming out with like me reacting to arrests and reacting to courtroom videos. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see you all next time. Hopefully we'll try and do, it's been very busy. Like business just picked up out of nowhere and um, you all know the rest. So I'll talk to you soon. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.